moving in to Los Angeles Chargers at Minnesota. Should the Vikings trade Kirk Cousins? We've been talking about this for quite a while now. Oh, bro. Like, let me just be rigid and, and I'll let you go after this, but let me be rigid. If they don't find a way to get the trigger pulled by the deadline, I think it does very much, in a sense, dictate the future of this team positively or negatively in, in every sense, where it's like, again, let me be clear. Vikings fans probably get ready to lose it on me, but let me, Kirk Cousins is an amazing quarterback right now, right? He's a great quarterback right yeah, now. Yeah, he's That's on, on pace to throw for 6,000 yards. Right, this is not hate on Kirk Cousins. Maybe amazing is a little too much praise, but he's playing at a great level right now. I'm going to leave it at that. So it's nothing to do with Kirk. That has to do with the fact that the Vikings built the roster the wrong way, and you can't keep building around a 35, 36-year-old guy who's going to be 37 soon or whatever, 37 in the near future. You get my point. It just does not work. He's going to be, I mean, the point where anything is he's leaning towards 40 and they have still have plenty of things they need to figure out. Building around Kirk is obviously not the move. Every, everyone knows this. It's being realistic. And again, like I even said, best case scenario is what? You make a deep run or even in best case, best case, go all the way with Kirk somehow, some way in the next couple of years. Okay. And then he's old and you have to restart with the whole base of team that needs, it just does not work. It does not work. And that's the most blessed, best case scenario. They need to be started to rebuild basically now. And the best year to do it is now. Yeah, it's like get it out the way. Stop hesitating. You were zero and three when your offense is playing at its best level. It's it's a sign. You talk about a sign from the universe. Like this is that sign to the whole Vikings organization. And that's the thing is like they've been like going back and forth with this. Like oh, should we rebuild? Like they're in a competitive rebuild. But the thing with the competitive rebuilds are you're never bad enough to get the top players in the draft. And the issue is also another reason they're zero and three is because they've given the ball away on an average three times a game. Nine turnovers through three weeks. That is the reason they are 0-3. Like we were talking about ball security. They've only taken the ball away twice. So there, it's a, ni- a negative seven point dif- or turnover differential. This is why they lost the game. The offense is the only reason they stay in games. Defense has been bad. It has been bad. Kirk is playing well. The O-line is surprised considering all the injuries. Um, but the Vikings, at the end of the day, are by far the best of the 0-3 teams. Um, and you should see the record correct itself some point in the season, but they're going to be consistently in shootouts because they can't create turnovers and they're giving it over and they're allowing 40% conversions on three to, on third down, like 40% of the time the other team's converting. So I don't know. Like I honestly think like the chargers got saved this game. Like it wasn't like a good win for either team. That's the thing is like, even though the chargers got the win, it was not like a great win. Um, their offense continued to look great. Mike Williams going out is going to hurt them a lot, but the run game wasn't existent. It would, it could be a mix of things like not having Eckler, you know, the Vikings selling out to stop to run, doing to getting stomped on by the Eagles last week. But I don't know. You got to get a run game because in my opinion, like what Herbert did today, like Herbert, I just want to give props. I've not, I've not been a hater on Herbert, but just like have questioned like his elite abilities. He's playing amazing right now. Keenan Allen had a great day and I hope Quentin Johnson can step up. Um, the defense played better, uh, but there's still improvements to be made. Their fifth most amount in points scored uh, or points allowed, um, which is going to kill this team because they're six most their Their offense is like sixth in points scored. So similar to kind of what we were talking about, or what we'll talk about with the Seahawks. Um, but overall, the team is progressing. The defense, in my opinion, has to be top 15 for Staley to keep his job. Like, why are you defensive head coach and your defense sucks? So, yeah, no, this either way. Uh, I guess I'm going to start with that and just get over that quickly. Yeah, this this does not in any way reinvigorate the uh, keep Staley around wagon yeah. on the other. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. We're just going to start with that. Because, um, again, they almost folded the game. And uh, side note, but I'm sure Chargers fans are just feeling very much how, uh, you know, and I'll get, we'll touch on this later again from you know, our perspective, how Saints fans are feeling at this point. Man, they just cannot play one. It's just like a game where it's just, oh, this is just good flow. Where, you know, we play good flow start to finish. Like, there's always, gonna be some, there's always, there's always like in a Chargers game, there's just, it's just, there's always some crazy moments, right? Yeah. And it's just getting out of hand at this point, but it's just, it's just funny. Um, But yeah, okay, jokes aside, I do think Quentin Johnson is going to step in and play a lot better than he's playing. He hasn't been getting too many opportunities. You know, you're looking at the numbers. You're like, come on, let's, you know, let's see uh, someone who's drafted so highly, so highly touted coming out. Let's see, let's see him get some more targets. Let's see him get some more opportunities. I think that's what we're going to start seeing. And then, yeah, uh, with the Chargers defense, I guess what I want to say, main thing is, if you're a Chargers, you know, Chargers fan, you got to love seeing Kenneth Murray finally make a big play because he's been struggling for a while now, uh, for especially where he's drafted. He's never really lived up to that. See him make a big play, maybe turn the season around. 
But yeah, I agree with you. Chargers defense, all in all, though, still. And also Thule making a play, the rookie. You love to see that getting a sack, getting in the backfield. It's just, but all in all, this defense, you know, they had a good day getting to the quarterback. But again, still all in all, underwhelming unit. You want to see them start really, really playing with an identity, and they still haven't really started doing that yet. Team's still struggling. Uh, and like you said, against the Vikings, who, yes, best um, team that is terrible, <laughs> right? Like that best team that yeah. is not playing well. But on the other hand, it's like, you know, the Vikings still have things. That, that's the point. Is you still have things you hold on to. You still have good pieces to build around once you get rid of Kirk. But like you said, if you keep hanging around in this middle of the pack territory, because even if they kept, let's see, they keep Kirk all year, they'll get enough wins where I don't think they'll be top even five pick. They'd be, you know, whatever, whatever. 10 to 15. Right, 10 to 15, 7 to 8. They'll make 7 the to playoffs. 15. But yeah, nothing we're going to no. very likely at least be able to grab the future of the franchise 100% certain. Where yep. you're like, I'm very confident in the future of this being the guy.